Alright, welcome back to another one of the procedural creation series. This time we are doing the infamous carpet, uh, which I have right here. So it 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 is a bit daunting at first if you if you look at it, but it really is nothing um, that complicated. If uh, if I get to explain it to you, um, it's just uh if you look at it, this <laughs> this whole thing is really big and um uh it is a bit um it is a bit laborious but it's just that's just because it's nothing more than a few steps being repeated a bunch of times so it's pretty simple um when you get to it so uh we'll create two graphs first will be just a pedal shape generator will, which is something which i devised um it's it's uh, really simple it's uh, it's not perfect either but it gives us um a complicated shape that we uh, that we want so um so that's the first step and then we'll move on to creating the actual um carpet so yeah so we have our work cut out for us so let me just go ahead and start so let's just create a new substance uh, graph let me put the render back to opengl so a new substance graph uh, and yeah we can start with this <coughs> now um uh, a full disclaimer we are not going to do something this complicated um i'm going to explain each and every step but uh, in the end it's just uh, a repetition of those steps to make something more complicated and more detailed um and yeah and at the end we'll do the material part of it which in which will create these all these strands and uh, you know um uh, give it a, a real a woven structure like that so <coughs> first things first uh, let's create a petal which will be used to create all these um complicated designs um which is really easy to do you just have to take a shape and make it a disk take a transform 2d and you can use it to um, just like squish it and by the way when whenever you're using transformation 2d um, I think this should be default but uh, you have to set your tiling mode to no tiling which which is always better uh, but I don't know how, how why they have like put this um, as default Anyways, uh, we'll then add a mirror, and that gives us a petal. Now, if you want something really fancy, like something like this, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, let's just keep it a bit simple for for this purpose of demonstration. All right. Next, uh, next we are going to like. Mm, multiply it a, a bunch of times so for that we always uh, almost always use a splatter shape shape splatter right. now um, okay now uh, we are I'm not gonna put it into the pattern one um, let me explain why in a moment uh, you can try Oh, of course it and if it gives you this really dim um, looking result you can just go go down and under height just turn height scale order just to false so um, the thing is I want the petals to only appear in this in the kind of a center so that it, it you know forms kind of a bunch to do that we can have a shape um, bell and we can just plug it into this into the pattern distribution input of the splatter node now this um, does nothing but if you put the pattern number to something like 3 and uh, increase the pattern distribution map multiplier you will see that it forms a kind of a void here and that's because it knows what to uh, spawn uh, elsewhere but it doesn't know what to spawn um, in the pattern 2 
which uh, or three which is supposed to come here so i'm gonna put this into the pattern three i know it's a <laughs> it's a weird way to think about it but that's just how it works so then you can it's all a matter of um changing this the values of things so you can set these values um one more thing this really doesn't look like a, a bunch of petals um so what we want here is to kind of tell the splatter that like we want smaller petals in um in the bottom and larger petals in the top like to kind of have a shape and also we want uh, uh smaller petals to to rotate a certain way and and the petals at the top to s rotate outwards um and uh, something like that so to do that it's um quite simple you we can take a gradient linear one put it in the shape scale input and i'm going to invert this and put it in the shape rotation input so now what will happen um, is if i uh, go to its um, shape uh, scale size and i can turn this up shape scale map multiply and you uh, you can see what happens it gives um, smaller petals on the bottom and larger petals on the top we can do this in the shape uh, in the rotation just put the rotation map multiply now you see what happens is uh, it rotates a certain way but every row rotates differently so that's kind of what's happening here now this will not give you that full flower petal bunch that you're looking for that will it this will give you only half of it and we'll just mirror it to kind of form that uh, and yeah this it's not a perfect way it's just um it's just a quick and dirty way to to get a kind of a result cool now uh it's just a matter of uh, playing with the settings at this point uh, a bit so let's just turn up the scale of things um rotation let's turn let's try this rotation here right i can reduce the map multiplier and I can rotate it like this, right? I can put the scale random. I can put the position random. And I can increase the size of this. But uh, it's actually better if you decrease in the X and increase in the Y. Uh, sorry, decrease in the Y as well. Because that gives you kind of the big petals which you might want. It's giving me something and while we're at it let's just add a mirror grayscale to kind of see the full result yeah so we can we can do whatever we want here it's it's really up to you at this point how what kind of um, shape that you want Right, so let's say something like this is um, is what we like, right? So we could we could call this um, this the clean version of um, of this pattern. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add some kind of um, secondary um, details on the edges because this is like this is just too clean for for a carpet <coughs> pattern. So I'm going to disturb this a bit. Also, let's take a multi-directional warp grayscale. Put this here. Uh, let's take a Berlin. Let's take a levels and put this in here. And that way, we can have something like this. I'm going to increase the scale a bit. I'm going to have uh, let's play with this 
no, I don't want too much. I just want to disturb this. Um, now let's add uh, levels. Right. See. So we have added some some kind of detail to to it, which um, which looks kind of cool. Um, at this point, what we can do is have an edge detect. Uh, invert this and edge width. Let's set do something uh, like this, and let's reduce the edge roundness to something like this. Now. Um, so we have we really have three um, outputs from this we have the edge um, output we have the the disrupted output and we also have the clean output so um, we can use the all these three in all sorts of ways um, down the line uh, so let's have some outputs output node so as i said this is my um, final output and let's have another one I have this as um, edge output and I have another one which I am gonna connect here and I have this as a clean output so clean um, final and Edge. We have three outputs here. Right. And that's that's really cool. So uh, let's go ahead. I'm gonna name this to petal generator. Right. Also, um, you can change the seed values. To easily get something different uh, let's create a new graph uh, this will be the main thing this will be the carpet right cool right so what we can do is we can just drag our petal generator here right and see what happens if I just put the random seed to it that's it uh, for this video uh, in the next one we are gonna continue with the actual creation of the pattern of the carpet i'm gonna keep it really simple but uh, you can take it ahead as much as you want and make something really complicated with it so yeah thanks for watching see you in the next one